In today's episode, Texas receives Cybertruck's 9,000-ton Gigapress. The Tesla Semi had been handed off to its initial client. Shanghai surpasses record production levels from the previous year, and an insider meeting with Giga Berlin reveals Tesla's global strategy for boosting U.S. economic growth. There is much to discuss, so let's get started. The 9,000-ton Gigapress, the largest die-casting machine in the world, has arrived in Texas and is being used to manufacture Cybertrucks for Tesla. Twitter sources claim that on September 28, a ship sailed from Genoa, Italy, carried the new press and docked in Houston. This tracks for the Gigapress since we are aware that the IDRA Group's headquarters, which produces the massive casting machine, is close to Brescia, which is roughly halfway between Milan and Venice. So their best option for an export hub to the USA would be the port of Genoa. This appears to be the same machine that IDRA hailed as their biggest and most potent casting machine to date in June of this year. The business made the new press the centerpiece of their open house event over the summer and even invited Sandy Monroe, a well-known YouTube engineer, to inspect the machine in person. The shipment arrived in 54 different crates, weighing 77,500 kilograms, according to an itinerary posted by Giga Texas drone pilot Joe Tegmeyer. This is consistent with earlier rumors that circulated over the summer, according to which IDRA would need to disassemble the Giga Press before shipping it, and Tesla would need to reassemble it once it arrived. This means that it will take a very long time. There is no information about when this shipment will arrive at the Austin factory, but once it does, it is possible that the press will be rebuilt on the production floor and a long process of calibration and test pressing will begin. The Cybertruck's rear underbody, which supports the truck bed and is the largest component of the body assembly, will likely be cast using this enormous machine because it is the largest of its kind in the entire world. During a process called die casting, the Gigapress uses a lot of pressure to make large parts of the vehicle frame. For each component, a single enormous die mold that is divided into two halves is used. Once the press is shot, 9,000 tons of force are applied to press the two die halves together. The vacuum-sealed molds are then filled with molten aluminum alloy using a high-speed plunger. This must be done with such accuracy that the liquid metal fills the mold completely with no air bubbles or gaps. The newly formed component is revealed when the press releases the die and pulls the two halves apart after the metal has hardened. Lubricants are used to make extraction simple, and the robot places the pieces in a quenching tank to cool them. Robots cool and clean the open mold after it has been removed, and then the process is repeated. When casting parts for the Model Y, Tesla's current generation of Gigapress machines generates about 6,200 tons of force. This new version, which was previously believed to be impossible to construct even by the IDRA themselves, has a force output of over 9,000 tons enabling the casting of even larger components and terrifying Vegeta. The Model Y frame's front and back quarters are now made by existing Gigapress machines in single enormous chunks of metal, a task that previously required about 300 individual robots connecting over 70 pieces just to build the back quarter. This is how Tesla has been able to keep increasing production levels and maximizing efficiency at their Giga factories year after year. Just one last check before we continue. Returning to that figure, 77,000 kilograms may seem like a lot, but keep in mind that the Gigapress is about the size of a small house and is primarily constructed of solid steel components. The IDRA specification sheet indicates that the 9000 series press should weigh just under 600,000 kilograms or 590 tons. To be clear, Tesla did get a big shipment of heavy things from Italy, and it's possible that they were both brand new parts for the 9,000-ton press and a Cybertruck Gigapress that was already working. At least, it doesn't seem like this is the ultimate form. To avoid refuting everything we've said up to this point, Tesla undoubtedly received a sizable shipment of heavy items from Italy. These items could very well be brand new components for the 9,000-ton press, but it looks like this is just the first of many steps 
that need to be taken to make a Cybertruck Giga Press that works. Elon Musk tweeted on October 6 that the company had started assembling the first batch of its electric semis and that PepsiCo would receive the trucks by December 1. Elon claimed that the trucks have a 500-mile range and that he finds them to be a lot of fun to drive. Later on October 7, the PepsiCo official Twitter account reaffirmed that assertion. They stated to cite them, we can confirm our first electric Tesla semis will arrive on December 1, 2022, supporting our PepsiCo beverages plant in Sacramento and our Frito-Lay plant in Modesto, California. In 2017, Tesla unveiled its concept for a semi-truck, and a ton of businesses flocked to order the gleaming new zero-emission cargo hauler. Pepsi was the first to act, placing the largest order of 100 vehicles. The goal was to start converting the Frito-Lay factory in Modesto, California into a zero-emission factory using the first 15 of these electric semis. But regrettably, the vehicle's production has taken a little longer than anticipated. A delivery that was originally scheduled for 2019 was delayed to 2020, then to 2021, and is now actually happening before the end of 2022. Currently, a unique facility close to the Nevada Gigafactory, which began operations last year, is producing Tesla semis. We are aware that the current volume is extremely low, but the plan is to move the semi-production to Giga, Texas, once the factory can produce the 4680 battery cell in greater quantities. Tesla has been working to set up the first mega charger station at Frito-Lay's facility in Modesto, California, so they can take delivery of the Tesla semis and start using them right away. Even though the first phase of the operation will see very little use of this, it's still a crucial change to witness. A significant portion of the carbon emissions in the North American transportation sector is caused by the typical diesel semi. Only 5% of vehicles on the road are medium and heavy-duty trucks, but they produce about 24% of all transportation emissions in the U.S. Furthermore, their 500-mile range per charge means that their operating costs are extremely high. According to estimates, the average operating cost of a Tesla semi would be about half that of a diesel truck. So long as the infrastructure is in place to support them, the economics makes sense. As we previously stated, a special mega charger with a 1.5 kilowatt output is required for the Tesla semi. That is equivalent to six times the power of a typical Tesla supercharger, which can produce 250 kilowatts. The utility of the electric semi will be fairly constrained until these fast charging stations are widespread across more loading and unloading facilities. But after a few months, we'll be able to see how everything turns out in practice and can stop speculating for the time being. By the way, if you're enjoying this content, please give this video a thumbs up. Also, stay tuned until the end to know more updates about Tesla. The company's plans for global expansion are revealed in new information from an all-employee meeting held in Berlin, along with a renewed emphasis on domestic U.S. production. According to the reports, the Giga Berlin Works Council reviewed the factory's accomplishments so far this year before discussing Tesla's plans for the upcoming few months. In these plans, Tesla explains how it will work around the world to boost U.S. production so it can take advantage of the new tax credits offered by the Inflation Reduction Act and the extra money the U.S. government will give to the green energy sector over the next 10 years. The meeting minutes state that as part of this strategy, up to 50 employees from Giga Berlin will be transferred to U.S. facilities. Because of this, Tesla says it will temporarily stop producing some batteries at the Berlin facility. Tesla claims that despite the brief halt in battery production, they do not anticipate Giga Berlin to slow down other than this change. According to Tesla, the team will keep making battery electrodes and testing and calibrating the new 4680 machineries will also go on. On that front, the facility recently hit the milestone of 2,000 Model Y units per week, and they believe they can still hit 5,000 units per week by the end of the year. While Berlin employees are assisting in the U.S. even more encouragingly, 
Berlin's local drive unit production has increased to over 100 units per day and is anticipated to soar once a second work shift is added in 2023. The drive unit production at Giga Berlin is currently supported by imports from Giga Shanghai. It is encouraging to see Giga Berlin begin to do more of its production in-house, but it is difficult to say that Shanghai is suffering as a result. According to the most recent data from the Chinese Giga factory, over 83,000 vehicles were sold and exported just in September 2022, surpassing the previous September's figures by roughly 48%. According to overall statistics, Shanghai has sold over 64% more cars so far this year than it did the year before. The number of vehicles delivered this year was over 483,000. Despite the interruptions and shutdowns, estimates for the factory's output following the recent upgrades suggested that it might be able to produce 100,000 units per month or 1.2 million cars annually once it fully ramps up and they're already pretty close to that number. The facility also supplies other factories with parts they can't yet make or are working to bring in-house, like the drive units for Giga Berlin, which make up a significant portion of Tesla's global sales. It's pretty amazing to see the numbers laid out in this way considering that Tesla's global production network has consistently relied on the Shanghai facility. The other Giga factories should eventually be able to match and even outpace this manufacturing rate. Now, what are your thoughts about these updates? Which Tesla vehicle do you want to know more about? Please comment down below. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I'm Fred. Please subscribe to our channel for more technology updates and like and share this video. Now, do you want to find out why Tesla created and entered the industry of semi-truck? If yes, then click and watch the next video here.